warning. Yes, survival has been the key word for the past about year. Yes, it has. It's been a crazy year. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we were just past, was it yesterday, the one year of kind of anniversary of the first case in the state of Indiana. It's, yep. it's, I think we're right at one year. So it has been a uh, interesting 12 months, to say the least. Yes, that it has, that it has. So yesterday was our board meeting. Uh, not a lot going on. We're still early into the year. And, and the, the biggest thing we have, we're starting to do some of our capital acquisitions. So yesterday, Melinda Rogers, who's the manager of our sleep lab, came in and she presented her request to the board for a replacement of our EEG system. And what that does basically, it, it uh, does brain waves. So as you're having sleep studies or any other type of neuro issues, your physician can order that scan. So the equipment we had was functional, but it was to the point that we could no longer update the software. You know, just like at home at some point, you know, they say we no longer support that system. Yeah. So she did that presentation to the board and got approval to go ahead and replace our EEG system. And the uh, uh, placement cost is, uh, was approved at not to exceed 40958 so a little more than a home computer. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, it, it is going to allow us, there are some functions in some of the new software now that we couldn't get before with our other system. So again, it's going to make it better for the, our patients, better for the physicians, a little more diagnostic tools for them so that they can order some expanded tests that we couldn't do in the past. So it was kind of nice to be able to, to get to that point and say, let's, let's start moving forward. And, uh, you know, the board's been very progressive, and I appreciate that. As we look at new technology, you know, what makes sense for Woodlawn Hospital, what makes sense for our community. And we're just not spending money to spend money. We're actually getting equipment and, uh, you know, new technology that is going to you know, really make a difference for our patients. And so the board's very proactive in that. Uh, they're very engaged in those presentations, ask some really good questions. So it's been kind of fun to bring them on board as we look at this new technology. You know, we went with the the Da Vinci robot, we just recently went with the Rosa robot for knees and hips, you know, and we start looking at some of this stuff. Uh, next month we got some more technology that we're looking to uh, present to the board for a replacement of our MRI and our CT scanner. So, you know, as these new, as companies come out with new technology, what we're finding is it's actually getting cheaper now than what it was five years ago. So we're kind of looking at a uh, proposal to replace MRI and CT scanner and by moving up to the new technology, it could be a fairly sizable sa annual savings with the new technology because of the price has come down. So we'll be doing that and uh, just looking at different things that we really need to you know, get us up on board with. The equipment we have now is very nice, but again, you start looking what's in some of that new stuff. Just little things that we can't do with our current software, current equipment that could make a difference for our patients and our physicians. So anxious to get that presentation from the director of radiology. We kind of just got a little tease Tuesday morning where the rep came in and said, hey, I got, got, a, I got a deal for you. And so we're starting to look into that and hopefully by next month have everything finalized, present that to the board. The biggest other thing we looked at was, you know, we had a fairly substantial drop in volumes. And, and as we look back from January to now, compared that to October, November, December of last year, and, uh, you know, the, the board's kind of saying, well, what's going on? And uh, so I actually did some, uh, a poll of several hospitals across the state, and we're experiencing the same thing they have. When, when we go back and look at what our volumes was October, November, December, compare that, you know, year to date, January, February, you know, most of March this year, you know, we're, we're probably looking at just quarter to quarter, about a 45% reduction in volumes. A lot of the other hospitals I've talked to, they're looking anywhere from 70 to 90 percent reduction in volumes oh, wow. over that same period. So we're all trying to figure out what's going on. About the best that you know we can come up with was everything started opening up late September. So we started seeing people that had been putting off all their tests and what they needed done all through the year. All came in that fourth quarter of last year. So we had a, you know high volumes. So it's kind of you know the rebound effect. We kind of got the rebound, and we're now in that slow cycle again. So, you know, I think it's going to even out as we start now moving forward. And I think, you know, after talk, the governor's talk last night, where they're going to start maybe really you know opening up some more stuff come, you know, in April. I think we'll start seeing our volume bump back up again as people's more comfortable coming out and, you know, the nice weather and stuff. So it's it's been interesting. Uh, you know, a lot of our volume decreased first quarters because we've had no flu. Right. You know, I mean, I think we've had maybe three positive flu cases, whole flu season. So, you know, everybody says, do masks work? Yep. I mean, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's what's preventing the flu is, 
you know, folks aren't getting out, they're not, you know, moving around and they're wearing masks. So uh, it's been kind of interesting to watch the flu side of things. It's virtually non-existent this year. So I, I hope we will learn as we move into, you know, future flu seasons. You hate to say it, but maybe, yeah, maybe for a couple months we do wear the mask again just to, you know, cut down on that flu as it hits in, in next fall. Finally got into kind of the financials for the month. We had uh, gross patient revenue about 12.4 million, which is you know under budget, so a little less than what we anticipated. Uh, our deductions from revenue, our write-offs were from contractual allowances with insurance companies because you know nobody pays us what we bill. And, right. you know, we all have to give discounts. That's about 7.9 million. We had other operating revenue, 314,000. Operating expenses was 4.7 million. So we actually was able to come up with an operating income for the month, about 135000 which was not much, but, you know, I think we'd actually budgeted a loss because usually, you know, January, February, March, April is our really bad month. So it was nice to see that positive operational income. Had some non-operating revenue, about 121000 So our final income for the month was about $257,000 net income for the month, which was a surprise. You know, we kind of bank that because, uh, you know, February or March is, again, one of our bad months when we start looking at spring break, schools yeah. are out, a lot of our physicians are on vac may take, you know, a week vacation to be with their kids. So I think our volumes are, are going to be even worse in March as we look, you know, for ne uh, next month's report. So I'm not uh, looking forward to looking at the financials <laughs> for the month of March, but they are what they are and we just have to move forward and go from there. Probably the other biggest thing that we did is the board has been looking at their bylaws, which hasn't really been reviewed for a couple years. So we've been you know, kicking that around for quite you know, for a couple months. I think we finally got it kind of narrowed down. There's just some minor changes that uh, we give to the attorneys to draft into the, the bylaws. So they'll come back to the board next month for uh, first presentation, and then they have to wait a full month, and then they can approve them that following month. So we're hoping to have new bylaws probably by the May meeting, get those kind of put to bed and they'll be good for another couple of years or so. And you know, the, the biggest thing there is just make sure that as we see state statute changes, the board bylaws follow that and make sure we're not in violation of some state statutes because like everything else, they, they change those quite frequently. So you got to keep on top of them. And that was pretty well the board meeting. Uh, I think we were done a little, a little after two o'clock yesterday. Now, uh, my biggest question actually comes from uh, Monday when we did Doc Talk. Yes. You guys are in the process of becoming a vaccine site? Yes, we are. We've got the doses in house. Uh, right now, there is a paperwork uh, nightmare going on with the state of Indiana that they're having a hard time getting us registered in what's called the Zotex system. And that is where, you know, if you go online to make book an appointment, it's through this Zotex. So we've been working with them. Uh, pretty well every day a phone call and trying to figure out you know well that number doesn't match this number and it's it's on their end so we've done everything we can do so uh, I haven't heard today I know we had a phone call I think it was gonna be at 11 o'clock or so with the state of uh, state board of health to give us okay here's where you're at and here's where we're going so we're we're ready uh, we've got the vaccines ready to give we just can't get on that website to be listed as a registered site yet so once that happens uh, we'll start doing the vaccines. We've got an initial 200 doses, and then we'll be receiving 120 doses per week as we move forward from there. So anxious to get that going. Yeah, we were talking off air. That's the uh, Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. Hard. Yes, uh, that's kind of the main one that's coming out now from the state of Indiana. Uh, you know, the the Pfizer and Moderna was the very early ones because they got, got approval first. Right now, J and J is coming on and, and coming on strong with several million doses that they're giving out. So. That is, it's a one-shot uh, vaccine this time, and uh, so anxious to get start getting shots in arms to get folks vaccinated. Uh, you know, we're we're up like say some of these. We're at a one-year anniversary for some some of the first COVID cases, so we're trying to see you know those folks have been vaccinated early on. Some of the the test subjects way back in March and April uh, that got that first vaccine as you know the guinea pigs. We want to look at those, you know, that we haven't seen results yet, but is that antibody still active? Right. And that's going to tell us whether or not this is going to be a long-term vaccine or are you going to have to do a booster, much like you do a flu shot every year. You know, I'm sitting here, you know, the, the, the Google expert, you know, if you go down <laughs> Google, you can be an expert on anything. You know, it kind of tells me that we're probably going to be looking at a booster, I think, each year. Okay. And some of the new data that just came out is if you got the Pfizer initially, 
maybe you want to get to the Johnson & Johnson as your booster, not stay with the same brand, so you kind of get a little bit of, of you know, mixture of the two to up that immune system. So still, that's, that data is still not finalized yet. So they're still looking at that. But we're just coming up on, you know, that first year anniversary of, of shots going in arms from the, the test subjects. Is that antibody still there? And that's the key. Does your body keep it or are we going to have to booster it? So, I, you know, more to come on that. But even if it, if it is a booster, my, my hope is at that point, it'll just incorporate that into the flu vaccine. You come in, you get your flu and COVID at the same time and move on and uh, get this behind us until something new comes out. <laughs> Yeah, something new. I'm something sure we'll new. See something yes. new eventually. Yeah. Um, hopefully not in our lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with you on that. So it, it's it's like I say, it's been an interesting ride to look at the technology that how fast it has progressed during this COVID year, and you know a lot of folks saying, well, I'm not comfortable with that. But if you go back and look what the pharmaceutical companies did, they devoted 100% of their resources to the COVID vaccine instead of having 10, 12, 14 different things going at the same time, that's why they were able to get this, you know, formulated, get it approved and get it going because that's all they did for this year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like everything else, are you gonna have some adverse effects? I think we had our meeting this morning with our pharmacists. We're still looking at anywhere from five to 8% of the population has what they call an adverse reaction, which is the, the temperature, the fever, you know, the tiredness. But that means 95% of those who get it have no reaction whatsoever. Right. So you know that's pretty good odds. If if it's if I'm a betting man, I'm going to take that 95 percent chance. And uh, so we're really encouraging folks get your vaccine, even if you tested positive, you know, for COVID before. Kind of get past 90 days from that, get the vaccine because we're just not sure the actual virus itself how long that antibody stays in your body. That they're still researching that. So you know if you've had it. Uh, get past your 90 days, highly recommend get the vaccine. It, it's virtually painless. 5% of the people have a, a reaction to it, but that means 95% doesn't. So, you know, it's uh, like, you know, some folks say, well, I can get it and just call in and say, I don't feel good. Get a day off, stay on the couch, but get your vaccine. It's, yeah. it's just the best thing to do right now. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of answered the other question I had, which is if you've already had COVID, do you need to get the shot? So. Yeah, they're, they're still saying yes, because the, the again, the unknown is, if I've tested positive for the actual disease, how long does that antibody stay active in my body? And they just don't have an answer for that yet. They're, right now they're guessing. It's good, you know, they're seeing some folks nine to 10 months post COVID with a still active antibody, but we still don't know that long term. So the recommendation from uh, most all medical professionals is give yourself a 90 day window post COVID, get your vaccine just to extend that, that period out so that because we've we've had some folks who've gotten it twice, uh, you know they've they've had a mild dose early on and then they six eight months later they get it again. So it can happen. So let's protect as most most people we can uh, get that vaccine. That that is going to be the key factor to get everything back to somewhat to normal, uh, whatever normal is now. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're ever going to back to where we were in 2019. No. And I think those days unfortunately are behind us and, and it's just changed our whole outlook on how do we interact with other folks and but I, I we got to get back to somewhat to normal and I think the vaccine is going to be that key factor get the shots in the arms get back to normal and, and try to just you know enjoy ourselves again yeah and uh, the final question I have I know we talked a little bit about it last month you were starting to see some guidance on your PPP Yes, uh, you know, the, the PRF funds, the provider relief funds, we're still waiting final uh, approval. We've got a consultant who's got some lobbyists in D.C. that starting to give us some information that what we have done, where we've, we've earmarked those funds, set them aside, we can start applying some of those funds now. Uh, we still think that we're probably, there, there was a, a loan from uh, Medicare. Uh, they sent us about $4.2 million early on to say, this is a loan, we're prepaying future bills. That is supposed to start being a take back starting in April. I have not seen any final word that that's not going to happen. So, you know, again, we've restricted those funds. So what'll happen, we'll bill Medicare for, you know, the Medicare recipients that have come in. And then instead of us getting money, they're gonna say, we should have paid you $100,000, take it out of the money we've already given you. Right. So we've already got it. 
we'll just be applying that. There, there is still a movement that they're trying to get that money as a grant, but I think you know that that ship, the sail's not real full of air on that <laughs> one. So I'm not sure that is finally going to happen. So we're we're prepared to start offsetting that. As we look at some of the other money that we've got, um, there's probably my best guess we'll probably have to send back about two million dollars. Again, we've put it in a savings account, so you know we've got right. it. We haven't spent it. But when we start looking at some of the restrictions on that, we just didn't meet some of those you know, restrictions that they have. So we're going to send that money back. But some of the other, I think we're going to be able to, to apply against some of our expenses that were absolutely COVID related that we can say, had not been for COVID, we wouldn't have spent this and this and this. So I think we can be able to apply a lot of those funds to that. But some of it probably is going to have to go back. So we're still waiting the final uh, stuff come from the government you know that that goose is still laying golden eggs that seems to come out every couple of weeks uh, but we're just hanging on to it not spending it and waiting till we know what we can do with it then apply it to maybe some past bills that we've already paid help offset some of that expense that we've occurred uh, you know in 2020 early 2021. All right. Well, Mr. Alley, thank you very much for stopping in. My uh, pleasure. Always enjoy talking to you each month and we'll do it again next month. Yes we will. Thank right. you. Thank you. So